Hey everyone, it's Lynn, your adulting coach. I help autistic young adults and their families systemize adulting together. Today's struggle is from, um, hold on one second, I'll get there. From the parents of young adults, 13 plus with autism. Our mom is concerned that her son has had not had much luck making friends. So let's look at her thoughts. First, what we're going to do, though, is take out, go through Barb Avila's process, which I highly recommend following. It's outlined beautifully in her book, Seeing Autism. It's where we start with understanding what the situation is, getting connected with ourselves and our autistic young adults, and then figuring out what the practice is that we can do to solve this problem and level up the skills that our autistic young adults have. So the first part is to understand what's going on. So, you know, this is a common struggle with our kids that friendships um, seem to be, you know, difficult to make and keep. And let's just start at the very beginning then. And I, I'm going to borrow some of Barb's words from her book, Seeing Autism. She suggests that social curiosity is what's necessary to create relationships with others. And the more anxious we are, the less likely we are to be curious. And we know that most of our autistic young adults have fairly anxious brains. They're just a little bit higher on that scanning the environment for what's going wrong or what could be wrong with them. And so that anxiety level is just ratcheted up a few notches. And that makes it difficult. So the cascading effect of having that anxiety and missing out on opportunities to create relationships with others and connect means that our autistic young adults are probably lagging behind their peers, their non-autistic peers in terms of social skills. And so therein lies part of the problem is that the skill level of our mom's a young adult is at 17 is probably not where other 17 year olds are at this time. Makes sense to me. In addition, this is the most difficult area of anyone's life to develop well is the relationship skills, the partnering skills. So again, Barb gives me wonderful words where she says that partnering requires responding to unpredictable bids from others in a contingent manner. So just think about that. It requires that our autistic young adults listen to the other person, recognize that they have a bid for connection, and then have a flexible way of responding based on the cues given in that um, bid to you know, reinforce the, the connection with the other person. This is this is the most difficult of all the skills to develop, in my opinion, in the areas to, to develop. And that's why we de we devote a whole module to people skills in the art of adulting. So we'll talk about that some more. Another thought that um, I, I raised this concept when we were walking last night with my son, and he suggested a couple of ideas that I think are worth looking at. The question he raised was, is this kid a, you know, an introvert or an extrovert? Good question. I did not know from the, from the uh, Facebook post, but I would encourage the mom to go to 16personalities.com. This is a screenshot and have her autistic young adult take this test, which they call a personality test, but I debrief it inside the art of adulting as a um, energy profile. And that's, it's, I think it's a great tool to increase awareness of what it is that the kind of brain that, that our autistic young adults got so that they have a stronger knowledge of what their preferences are in terms of energy and they can cement their identity so that they can find people who are more compatible with what works for them. I think it's a great tool, and I'm really glad my son raised that question. He said that, you know, sometimes the problem is that if they're too introverted, they don't say enough. 
And if they're too extroverted, they say too much. And often the extroverts will, will, you know, continue on a topic over and over again that, you know, the, that, that they should be instead of, instead of doing that on and on and on, they should be listening more and picking up on some of those cues that it's time to switch the topic or whatever. So I thought that was an interesting thought. And the other thought that he brought up was perhaps the young adult has a hard time noticing what the boundaries are. Maybe what happened was they texted too often or they, you know, asked over and over again and they broke the boundary of the other person, which may or may not have been stated. Often it's not stated. We just sort of infer it by the kinds of reactions we get, but sometimes our autistic young adults have a hard time picking up on what's being inferred by the lack of response. And, you know, even in some cases when they violated a boundary and they're not getting a response, they're, they're asking too often, sometimes they get angry and then they, you know, say things that are inappropriate and break the connection with the other person. So those were the thoughts that my, my son had and um, I thought they were really, really interesting about what's going on. So that's where we're trying to understand what's happening. And um, now we're into connecting first with ourselves and then with them. And of course, I'm going to recommend that we really look at our what's going on inside of our head and inside of our bodies and how that's driving the actions that we're getting and the results that we're doing and the results that we're creating from those actions. So the situation in the mom's case would be her son. And that's, you know, that's uh, one of her thoughts was, it was my mistake to suggest that he reconnect with some old friends. And I'm inferring that her emotion would be, when she's suggesting she made the mistake, regret. That she's regretting that she made this suggestion because what happened was he was in that group for two or three days and then they blocked him. And so she just was, deaf, you know, he was really sad that that happened. And she, he, she watched that whole rejection and the result was she rejected herself. And the result always ties back to our thinking. And she, so she's rejecting herself saying that I made a mistake. I should not have done that. Very understandable. Makes perfect sense that that's what she's thinking, feeling, doing, and the result that she's creating at that time. She also is thinking that she has her son and she does not know how to help him. So her emotion is sort of desperate for something to do that's going to solve this problem. And her action is she's so she's fearful of the future. She's worried about what his life is going to be like when he has, has this kind of trouble connecting with people and he's getting rejection. And how is that going to affect his own um, you know, near term uh, emotion? She suggests that he's getting kind of depressed. And so the other action that she takes is she asks for help within this Facebook group. And the result is that I think she starts to feel helpless because she doesn't know how to help him. She's looking for suggestions, doesn't know whether or not they're going to work. So she's, you know, she's creating that helplessness that the sentence, I don't know, will always create in all of us. And that's, I think, the number one mistake that we make is when we say, I don't know, because that's a lie. We do know the next step. And the next step is to connect with ourselves, connect with our autistic young adults, do some understanding from the background, and then go forward. We know that that's what we need to do. We don't always have the path illuminated in front of us with exactly what's going to work. But we do know that we can start taking the first step, which is trying to collaboratively problem solve this with our autistic young adult and teach them some of those lagging skills that make, per that it makes sense that they didn't learn those listening skills and reciprocity skills when they were so anxious about every um, social situation. It makes total sense. And let's look at it now from this, her son's point of view. He was blocked. 
his thought is, I don't know why. And so he feels rejected and he goes into all the spinning thoughts about nobody loves, you know, nobody likes me. No one wants to be my friend. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. What can I, you know, what, what, this is awful. Everybody else has friends, but me, you can imagine the spinning thoughts that are gener that are being generated in his head. And the result is he really doesn't know what to do because he doesn't know why he was blocked and he doesn't know what to do. So, you know, this is where we are at this time with our mom from, um, from the Facebook group. So what, how do we get out of this? The practice I always recommend is of course, to try and problem solve it. But let me, let me just emphasize that what, what we have here is a lagging skill of social reciprocity that builds connection with confidence. That's really what the lagging skill is. The unsolved problem is there's no friends, but the lagging skill is the inability to create that social reciprocity to build the connections with confidence. So that's what we need to solve for. And, you know, this is the skill that we need to start with. This is the people skill that we need to start with and the partnering skill that makes all the difference, the most difference. That's because theoretically in a conversation, we're listening half the time. Make sense? So the one skill we need to start with is listening. So the reflective listening is using a declarative sentence, not a question in the form of the, that has these three parts. It sounds like if I hear you saying, um, if I'm following you and help me understand, that's the opening. That's the first part of the declarative sentence. The second part is you feel and we identify the emotion and we can do reluctant, afraid, ashamed, lonely, or because so many of our autistic young adults have alexithymia, which means they don't have words for emotions. It doesn't mean they don't have emotions. It just means they don't have the words. Ale a is without, lexi is words, thymia is emotions. They just don't have the words for the emotions. Sometimes it's really best to just say, you feel uncomfortable. Because that just, yeah, I'm feeling uncomfortable about and then the about is whatever's happening. So this is a skill that we can teach. It has three parts and we can teach our autistic young adults to practice it after we have practiced it with them ourselves and they can start to see the pattern that we're putting in place. And then we didactically teach these three steps. This is the first, first skill that we need to do to help our kids with their um, friendships. And then of course, we go into that proactive problem solving process by Ross Green, where we state the, state the situation, listen to their point of view, state our point of view, and then come to an agreement on what the very next smallest action is that we can take to move our autistic young adults skill level, especially in the social area, just up a tiny notch at a time, inchworming our way to the success that we're looking for in social, in partnering with other people. So please, um, if this video was helpful to you, there is so much more available at The Art of Adulting, where we use the IMAP method. We create an identity that our kids, we help them create the identity that they want to live in, we help them manage their mind, and then we help them take the actions that they need to take at the A, and then learn how to recruit a team that's going to give them the support that they need on exactly when they need it. So the IMAP method is when, within the art of adulting. Please come to my website and learn more, www.lindcdavison.com. Bye for now.